Hello, everyone, and welcome to Build End to End IoT Solutions. This is a five part series. Uh, so, this part we are focusing on transforming your business with IoT. My name is Pamela Cortez. I am on the Azure IoT product team. I focus on dev communities, uh, also write a lot of tutorials, training material, uh, go out and train partners, uh, and also take a lot of feedback from our products, from all of you, into the product team uh, for us to keep continuing to approve our products. So I'm really excited to be your trainer for all five sessions. Uh, so let's all go ahead and get started. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation. We do have some folks on the side who can help answer questions. Uh, for this, uh, as I mentioned before, this is a workshop series. So the first one, transform your business with IoT, we're really gonna deep dive into the business value of it and then give an overview of the Microsoft IoT portfolio. Um, and then we're gonna go showcase how to get started with IoT Hub, uh, show some resources, some developer resources, uh, and really, get everyone aware of what is available. All right, and then next week in our next session is devices and device communication. This is all about device to cloud and cloud to device communication. We're gonna be deep diving into IoT Hub. Uh, we're gonna have lecture part in the beginning, but we're really gonna deep dive into the code for this one. So you're really gonna understand how to do device management, uh, how to connect your devices securely, um, our device SDKs. Uh, so that one's gonna be also a really fun one, especially for the developers out there uh, for us to dig into the code. Uh, the next one is going to be the device provisioning at scale. Uh, you know, it's great to connect one device, but what happens when you have tons of devices that you need to register, configure, and, and really be able to, to scale quickly? Uh, so we're really going to be going over the device provisioning service and how that works with IoT Hub uh, and how that fits into that overall device lifecycle uh, process. Uh, after that, we will be going through messaging processing, analytics, and business integration. For that workshop, uh, uh, virtual training event, what we'll focus on is really the Azure Stream Analytics, uh, all up stream processing, storage. We'll also talk about uh, time series insights. So if you're very interested in that, uh, we'll, we'll actually build an application together. Uh, and then we'll look into IoT Hub's integration with Event Grid. Uh, and then the final out of the series is work with Azure IoT Edge. This one's going to be a really fun one again uh, with the the other four, uh, we're really digging into the code for, for those. Uh, so for IoT Edge, uh, for this webinar, I'll go over what is Azure IoT Edge, but that last webinar, uh, we're really gonna be deep diving in how to build for Edge devices and actually bring intelligence from the cloud that's normally in the cloud into Edge devices. So that one's, that one's gonna be a really exciting one as well. Uh, so the link there to register for all of those workshops. And if you can't make one of those dates, it's OK, because all of these videos will be on demand uh, and ready anytime to watch. All right, so for this training event, the things that we're going to cover is one, Internet of Things opportunities, that business transformation across different industries. Uh, and we're really going to dig into the, the, the data what the different uh, use cases across different industries are, uh, what are some products that helps across uh, different use cases, um, and then we'll go into architecting of an architecture of an IoT solution. What are the subsystems of an IoT solution that you should be aware of and how that relates to our products? Uh, we'll then go into just what is our portfolio? Uh, there's a lot of products and services that Microsoft offers for IoT solutions. This uh, virtual training event, we're really just 
going to cover the core ones, uh, but there is a lot which you'll see um, and you'll you'll understand soon why there's a lot of products and services to to make building IoT solutions easier for you. And then I like to always have real world scenarios for each one of those products and services and use cases. Uh, that way it inspires us and also uh, keeps us aware of what other folks are doing in the industry. Uh, then we're going to jump into a, a mini lab on getting started with Azure IoT Basics. And really, we're going to create an Azure dashboard research group. We're going to dig into the Azure portal. You'll be able to know where to find IoT Hub in the Azure portal. We'll get uh, IoT Hub uh, created a new one. We'll register a device and then we'll link the device provisioning service to IoT Hub. Uh, so that one's really just going to cover the very basics. Uh, and uh, we have a couple other demos throughout uh, the presentation as well. And then at the end, I'm going to cover developer resources. So these are resources where it's more than just our docs, but how you can get involved, how you can reach us in engineering, because we love talking to all of you, um, and drive feedback and great discussions. Okay, so before we before we even get started, let's just level set with the IoT applications and the core core three elements of an IoT application things, insights, and actions. Things, of course, is the devices that are sending that data that generates the, ins uh, that generates the insights. Um, those insights are extremely important uh, because this, these insights then generate actions. So I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. Uh, one is if you have an engine and the engine has sensors on it that's sending temperature data, this is on the thing side that data is then used to evaluate if the engine is performing at uh, peak quality and if for some reason uh, the engine is running hot and you set thresholds to say hey this is this is not good or you're starting to see uh, issues long term uh, you can take those insights and drive actions out of it. For example, a great action item out of that would be making sure that you can have a maintenance person. So if uh, the heat goes up too high, alert a maintenance person or a service person, field worker to go out and look at that engine and see what's happening. So out of the core of all of this, out of an IoT application, we think of it as things, insights, and actions. All right, so let's dig into the different industries. A lot of people, when they're thinking of IoT, they're thinking of uh, consumer devices, uh, but really want to touch point that there's all of these industries right now that are actively doing this digital transformation. So we have manufacturing, they're really focused on how do I increase my efficiency or be more efficient with the machines on the factory floor. Um, you know, they're also looking into new revenue sources. The energy sector is looking to be more efficient, uh, more uh, especially especially with uh, uh, green energy and people being wanting to be more sustainable. Uh, they want cleaner power and using less of it across the industries. Retail, retail is extremely huge for IoT. Uh, these are to create a better customer experience, uh, create a new market opportunity. Uh, so for example, if you are in a store and you want to understand where folks are in your store are going, if they're all going into one location, uh, that might be a good indication of saying, all right, maybe we need to change our inventory and where it is in the shelf to help drive traffic to other parts of our store. Uh, and that could be helped with uh, IoT. Smart cities, there's, you've probably seen it a lot in the news, uh, but a lot of cities now are really looking into how do we become uh, uh, more sustainable uh, and also how do we compete against other cities as well. Uh, and then transportation, a lot of connected vehicles out there, they're moving goods. We'll really deep dive into this a little bit later. Healthcare, really just overall approving the quality and better outcomes for their patients. Uh, and then about uh, uh, farms, 
they're really changing what they're doing with uh, connected tractors, um, what they can do with the food to make sure the food when it's being shipped from their farms to let's say a store or uh, a warehouse that they're kept in top condition. So it's actually really uh, changing uh, the way that farmers uh, are now uh, part of their industry. So we're gonna go ahead and deep dive into one of them, which is healthcare. So I, I mentioned a little bit about healthcare. So 89% of healthcare organizations are adopting IoT. Uh, so IoT is not, it's not um, something that people are just hearing about. They, they're ready to adopt it right now. Uh, and 85% see this IoT as crucial for the overall success. Uh, and then also, 78% want to apply more IoT to their business. And you actually see a lot of these numbers across the different industries uh, of these high percentage of folks from those industries really understanding the value of IoT. Um, and the reason why uh, they, there's some um, top benefits for health organizations to adopt IoT, reduce chances for human error, help uh, care teams, unlock savings, increase revenue, um, improve the traceability of their equipment, supplies, and inventory. Uh, we even see now connected uh, robotics in the healthcare industry on, you know, understanding how to give pills out and which pills to give out to certain patients or even connected robots where it has a screen on them um, and they have a virtual doctor, a remote doctor who can go and be on that screen and talk to uh, patients. So we're just seeing a lot of innovation that's happening in the healthcare industry. Um, some of the top use cases would be a smart hospital equipment. So gain insights from your hospital equipment to monitor and manage that equipment. Uh, you know, the, those equipment and healthcare, especially hospitals are really expensive. So being able to make sure that it's being maintained, make sure that uh, there's could be any predictive maintenance on there, uh, being able to track some uh, equipment that maybe has been um, stolen or anything like that. There's a lot of things that can happen in a hospital and why you want to monitor the equipment. Uh, inventory management for medical supplies is one, healthcare manufacturing. So people who are actually uh, uh, developing these medical devices, uh, a lot of them are making them connected. Um, and how do they do that securely um, and also combine uh, uh, be able to make sure that they're in industry standards um, that is really part of healthcare. Uh, and then a couple more is cold chain supply tracking and then continuous patient monitoring. Uh, continuous patient monitoring, you're seeing that more and more uh, in hospitals looking at this. They want to make sure that when patients leave the hospital that they're doing okay as well. So I wanted to give an example of this, uh, of, a, of a rehab center who uh, is actually focused on diabetes. So I thought this story was really interesting because, and I wasn't aware of this, uh, but every 20 seconds, someone loses a leg or foot um, due to diabetes uh, related complications. So part of this is that this, center actually created a wearable connected device that was able to continuing to see the health of the patient, uh, making sure that everything's good. Uh, so it was a connected, uh, smart connected uh, boot. Uh, so this is really, really innovative of seeing how they can lower the mortality weight rate, which is already at 50 to 75 percent, how they can lower that um, by creating a boot that sends that information, alerts the doctors. Uh, that way they can send in the patients to be able to uh, uh, get help when needed. So I thought this was a really powerful story. Uh, big fan of what we can do in the medical field to drive real impact with the patients. 
So IoT and manufacturing, uh, lots of times manufacturing uh, is, is considered one of the top industries for IoT. And there's a definitely a big reason for that. 92% of manufacturers consider it crucial to the success of their company. So there's actually a lot of manufacturing right now where there's you know a lot of machines under the production lines that need to be monitored, but there's also a lot of service workers who are going to each machine collecting the data and then uh, manually collecting the data and then reporting it up, which can take a lot of time, especially if you need to make sure that uh, if there's a machine that's going down now, the service worker needs to be alerted pretty quickly. Uh, so going back to the numbers, 96% of those manufacturers are satisfied with the value of IoT ads to their company. So this is showing direct impact and cost savings for these manufacturers uh, who have adopted IoT. So top use cases that we're seeing in manufacturing, uh, continuous based monitoring. Again, there's a lot of equipment on factory floors, a lot of machinery um, that uh, every downtime that happens on a manufacturing floor is a big, big loss. Um, I used to do assembly on production floors and anytime one of the equipment went down, the line, we would have to completely stop the line. Myself would have to fix the pick and place machine or hurry up and grab a maintenance person, uh, which it just, you can imagine all of the workers who are on that line uh, not doing anything because if one machine goes down and it's assembly line and there's nothing else for those folks at the end of the assembly line to keep going. Uh, so that's a huge, huge reason why they want to make sure these machines are connected uh, to lower that downtime. Predictive maintenance over time over equipment effectiveness. This is really important to see that the equipment that you actually have is actually performing at peak. Uh, and, you know, especially when you're building other production lines, making sure you have the right equipment and, and really seeing the performance of the equipment that you have. If you see some equipment lower, not actually being at their peak performance, why is that? And actually being able to look at that long-term data that's been collected um, and stored in the cloud uh, to have some machine learning on it and really see what's going on uh, will help make decisions on future purchases as well. Asset tracking, there's a lot of equipment going all over the place. And that's why it's really important to be able to know where that uh, tracking, where that asset actually is. Um, I worked on a project where on the factory floor, there was uh, a lot of uh, forklifts that were going all over the place. Um, and you can imagine that's extremely dangerous if someone enters a zone where there's a forklift in um, that's actually uh, uh, being used at the moment. Um, being able to sit there and have a worker who goes into the wrong zone be alerted because you are actually able to what's what say they were wearing you know a, a tracking device or would say there was a camera uh, that uh, was doing anonymy detection uh, and was looking at the workers who are going into the zones or object detection and notice someone came into the zone that's not supposed to be there uh, that can alert you know, the service worker to move or the manager of the floor to move that person from that zone, that will help a lot, especially for workplace safety. Um, and then intelligent supply chain and facility management. So facility management is a lot um, about, you know, the energy consumption in different areas. Um, if a place is not being used uh, or location of the buildings not being used, if it's still the the thermostat is on high, uh, you're probably wasting a lot of money in that area if, it's that, if no one's over there. Uh, so being able to know uh, and be able to have these smart manufacturing buildings also helps save on cost. All right, so you maybe have heard of this digital feedback loop. Uh, this is a, a popular concept uh, but what it is, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier with things, insights and actions. Um, and 
it takes all of this data coming from devices, from folks, um, and analyzing this information to create those new insights. Um, and so it really allows these companies to make improvements to their business from increasing efficiency on delivering better customer experience and new revenue streams. Uh, so really, this goes back to the things, insights, and actions. And data comes from all different places, from your products to your employees, from the customers to the operation. Um, and when you bring them all together, you can drive amazing insights that will help you be able to actually improve your business outcomes. So I kind of hit it on that earlier, uh, so I won't dig in too deeply on the digital feedback loop. All right, so kind of went over the industries, but in big picture, the numbers, uh, 80 billion connected things by 2025, uh, that's coming up pretty quickly, uh, generating tons of data. So you can imagine there's tons of devices being connected, uh, and we really need to be able to simplify that experience with all those devices, uh, especially with a lot of people having more smart devices in their homes and all of these different industries connecting devices to help them monitor or uh, uh, help them with their use cases. The number is really huge, 80, 80 billion is a lot. Um, 267 billion is predicted of the actual spend in IoT by manufacturers, uh, actually by this year, <laughs> so by the end of this year. So there's a lot of money into it, and there's a reason why folks are investing in IoT. Uh, and then the last one I, I, I wanted to mention is that 80% of folks who actually adopt IoT, they see an increase of revenue due to the fact that they adopted IoT. So this is, you could see, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, but there's a lot of value into bringing IoT into these different uh, industries. All right, so if you've been part of the, the IoT uh, uh, industry for a while now or have been doing IoT scenarios. Uh, there's there's a kind of couple different innovations along the way when we think of IoT. First, connected devices. We connected those devices to the cloud. Uh, and that that was great. We were able to grab insights um, and be able to perform machine learning on the cloud, on the data, and then be able to uh, drive actions out of that. Uh, so that's where IoT was with innovation. The next round was Edge. So Edge um, uh, was all about, you know what, I'm sending all of this data to the cloud. What happens now that I want to be, like if I have, I'll give a good example, if my equipment is on a manufacturing floor and for some reason uh, the internet is not very good, which is very, very common on manufacturing floors. How do I actually bring that intelligence to the edge device? That way uh, I can be more real time, the latency, uh, lower the latency and uh, be able to process data on the edge. So you saw that that was one stage. That was the next stage of IoT, was really offloading that intelligence that was normally in the cloud onto devices. Then we started bringing more AI into it. Um, so breakthrough with intelligent capabilities in the cloud and on the edge. Uh, and so I'll dig a little bit more into that later, but AI has been really impacting what we're seeing on the cloud side and then on the, the edge side as well. And then where we're gonna be heading for the next top innovation is digital twins. Digital twins is really important and there's a reason why you're starting to see more companies look into what, what digital twins actually means. It's creating a living replica of a physical environment and being able to track its past and predict the future. Uh, so you can imagine uh, having an actual full building um, and all of its assets in digital form uh, before it's even built. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of power into digital twins. Uh, and this is the 
latest innovation in this space. All right, so what is Microsoft doing when it comes to innovation in IoT from the cloud to the edge? Uh, we're really focusing on simplifying IoT operations. If folks uh, who are listening to this uh, webinar right now uh, have built IoT solutions, uh, it's not always easy. It's uh, sometimes it could be complicated, uh, it could be time consuming. It used to be that it would take, you know, year plus before people would actually have an IoT solution that they can do in production. Uh, so it's really important with all these different industries who are wanting to put IoT in operations uh, for us to be able to simplify it. So we've been really focused on that area. Also security. Security is extraordinarily important and being able to do that easy because right now there's so many elements of security that's hard to do uh, from connecting the device or security actually on the device, uh, connecting the device to the cloud and then security on your cloud side and your resources. There's so many different elements where every touch point needs to be secure. So that's definitely a big focus. Bringing AI to the edge, uh, edge making AI easier to run on the edge is really important. Uh, you know, AI, lots, it's, I've worked with a lot of uh, data science teams uh, where they're working on AI models, which are, it's a kind of a different mentality when you have it on the cloud, when you're trying to deploy it on a smaller device. Um, and so this we're trying to make easier uh, because folks who are normally working with the, on the device side, now they need to work with folks who are building these AI models. And if the AI model is too big to be on the device, uh, that can have some complications. So rethinking of how we're bringing AI to the edge, even to these smaller devices, is going to be really important. Um, then uh, digital twins, what I was mentioning earlier, managing a physical world with digital models across smart spaces is also where we're innovating as well. All right, so I really recommend people, if you haven't yet checked out the IoT Signals report, it's a really great way to understand where the industry is right now. Um, and what I mean by that is that this study was uh, uh, brought in a bunch of partners, customers from small to large businesses. What are the biggest challenges that they're facing? Um, what are some areas of their, what are some of their top use cases? What are some areas of concern? Um, and so here are some three uh, things from that report that I thought was really important to bring in here. Um, one is that 88% see IoT is crucial to business success. Um, and then 48% see that there's a lack of skilled workers in IoT solutions. And there's, there's a reason for that, because uh, IoT, it's broad. <laughs> so you have your devices, you have your cloud application um, developers, you have a lot of different types of developers working on IoT solutions. Um, and there's a lot of different skill sets that you need to have. Um, and a lot of big teams that you need to think of and a lot of ways that you need to upskill for these workers as well. And this still being, even though it's not new is still relatively new to comparing to other skills and in other industries and in other scenarios that's been around for a long time. Uh, so we are seeing a huge lack of skilled workers in the IoT space. Uh, and these are that number is actually from folks who have already committed to bring IoT their, to their companies. Uh, so these are folks who and companies who are ready to do it ready to actually build these, but they're blocked by the lack of skilled workers. And then no big surprise, I think from anyone, 97% uh, of industry said security is top of mind when it comes to building IoT solutions. I think we, we probably hear on the news um, every other month of something being hacked or a vulnerability. And so there's this is a huge, huge uh, concern area for a lot of people because especially for consumer devices, uh, you know, if you have a connected 
home device and it gets compromised, that can really hurt your brand. Uh, and then across other industries, of course, as well. So going back to that knowledge that is crucial for the business success, it means that we need a really solid offerings for IoT for folks to quickly get started. Uh, so here's an overview of the Microsoft uh, portfolio, and we'll dig into these. Uh, and you can see that this these different products and services cross these different industries. Um, and so like, for example, Azure IoT Hub, it's going to be used in all those different industries. Uh, so we have uh, our IoT app services, uh, Azure IoT Central. Um, this is all about uh, a managed platform to be able to build with IoT Central, build IoT solutions quickly. Um, and we'll go through that in a little bit. And then our core services, we have Azure IoT Hub, device provisioning service, which is part of that Azure IoT Hub, Digital Twins, Azure Maps, Time Series Insights, Azure Security Center for IoT, and then go back to that Edge offering. So Azure IoT Edge, Azure Sphere, Azure RTOS, and Windows IoT. Uh, so we'll cover those. So those are the core elements, but really when you're building an IoT solution, that is just one part of your IoT solution, because you also have to think about where are you storing this data? Um, how are you visualizing this data? How are you working with um, AI models? How are you doing DevOps? Um, and then what happens if you have your own devices and you need to figure out how to connect to them? Um, what are some of the service that, services we have to help you along with that? Uh, what about stream processing? So it's, it's definitely a lot of services to help folks build end-to-end uh, -end IoT solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and go through what are the sub uh, systems in an IoT solution that it's part of almost every single IoT solution that you see out there. So we've already covered things insights and actions, and I know that that's just three things out of an IoT solution, but a realistic view is there is so much more in building into an IoT solution for us to think about. Um, and you can see de uh, device lifecycle all the way from storing data to how are you going to integrate this with the rest of your business. Uh, so there's a lot of things to note. So let's go ahead and deep dive into these different, different areas. So let's start with the things side. Uh, so first thing that we have is the IoT devices. So these devices, we need to securely register in the cloud. Uh, we need to collect, uh, be able to connect it to the cloud through a cloud gateway. Uh, so think of a cloud gateway as a way for those devices to connect securely to the cloud and send data and also provides uh, device management. So not only are you sending data up to the cloud, you should be able to do cloud to device uh, communication back. Uh, our cloud gateway offering that uh, we'll talk about in a moment is IoT Hub. Um, and then you also have device provisioning that you need to think about. Uh, it's one thing to, you know, connect one device to the cloud, but if you need to connect many devices to a cloud and register them, configure them, um, it, it's really important to look into IoT Hub device provisioning service, because uh, it's really gonna help you assign and register those devices to specific Azure IoT hub endpoints at scale. The next part is actually stream processing. Uh, and stream processing is all about, you know, analyzing large streams of data that's being sent from these uh, sensors um, and being able, what we, uh, being able to analyze that data as well. Uh, so we recommend Azure Stream Analytics, but there are multiple uh, products and services and open source solutions that you can use as, as well. Um, you can also look into, uh, you know, Azure Databricks if you prefer that. And then storage. Storage, this data needs to be stored somewhere. Um, uh, you know, if you're, you're really hoping that the data 
data is going to be available immediately, then you're going to start looking into warm path storage. Uh, this means that that data, you can get access to it quickly from the device for reporting and visualization. Um, that we recommend Cosmos DB. Um, for code path storage, this is for if you need to hold the data for a uh, longer term and be used for batch processing. Uh, we recommend Azure Blob Storage for that, but this is, this is important if you wanna do predictive maintenance or just need to be able to see data from long periods of time. So you're really gonna look at cold path storage. Next part is we're going to get to the action side is that business integration. It's great that you have all this data, you have all this insight, but how does that integrate with the rest of your business? Uh, and so uh, this is all about sending alerts or uh, being able to incorporate it to your uh, CRMs or, you know, maybe even sending, um, raising alarms or sending email or text messages for alerts. So whatever your business integration is, uh, being able to quickly take all of that IoT data and put it into what you already have as your business integration. Uh, next thing is actually the reporting tools, being able to configure control, the UI. Uh, this is important because you probably want to visualize the data and um, uh, there's not, you know, there's going to be a lot of teams who might not want to sit there and look at tons and tons of data in a non-friendly uh, manner. So being able to have reporting tools and a nice uh, uh, user experience, a nice uh, dashboard of this data to quickly understand what is happening uh, is really important. And then also user management. Um, user management is really important in an IoT solution because you might want one of your employees who's working on devices to have access to certain things, and then folks who are just focusing on the data side and visualizing the data not to have direct access to other things. So being able to say, who is the person who's gonna have access to a particular uh, service or product or, uh, uh, being able to have access to certain data will help uh, in your and who does what and then also in your your actual IOT solution. Uh, so these can be, you know, which users who perform access, uh, actions on devices such as upgrading firmware um, and overall just user management as part of most solutions. All right. So let's go back to the first part. So as we went through that, what are those core elements of building an IoT solution? Let's go back to the devices uh, and how they're connecting to the cloud and device management. So what we offer is IoT Hub. Uh, IoT Hub, it establishes that bi-directional communication. This is really meant for uh, uh, IoT devices. Uh, and so having that host, uh, having IoT Hub as a managed service hosted on the cloud, it acts as that central message hub for all of the data that's being sent by your devices. It's secure. Um, so there's sec secure authentication for each device that you have. Um, it's also have services like device provisioning service that helps you provision. And also, it supports uh, uh, any device out there. Uh, and so we have a series of open source SDKs. Uh, so if you have you know, a device that is a constrained device uh, that's small, we do have SDKs that can help with that. We have them in different languages as well. Uh, so you. Uh, the core languages like C, C Sharp, uh, uh, Java, all of that in our SDKs. Um, and then it's also easy to integrate with Azure services as a whole. And then device management. So I kind of wanted to deep, go a little bit deeper into this, but really the next, um, oh, our next 
webinar, we'll really deep into the code, the SDKs, and, and how to get started with IoT Hub. But I wanted to give some more information um, of what I said in that last slide. Uh, so we have that bi-directional communication, but I wanted to highlight that that end-to-end -end security. So we do have support for X509 certs, uh, TLS security, um, we can support device per device certificates. Um, we also help with, with that end-to-end -end security part of the firmware software updates. And then we also have the Azure Security Center support as well, uh, which you'll find uh, that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and then de the device provisioning service also has that level of security too. It supports that X509 certs, uh, supports uh, TPM, uh, which is really important to be able to have that trusted platform module on your device. Um, and then also it supports low balancing across IoT Hub. Uh, and so I just wanted to highlight some more extra features to think about with Azure IoT Hub and the device provisioning service. So I wanted to give this example. So this is all about, uh, this is one of our, for our customers um, and shipping containers, uh, shipping logistics, all of that is, it's really, really a top use case. Uh, and so you can imagine if you are uh, a farmer, uh, kind of what I highlighted earlier, um, and you are selling produce and you need to ship a bunch of bananas and you're working through these shipping containers. You're, uh, this industry is, uh, this company is shipping uh, your produce. There is uh, refrigerated uh, containers that uh, you could be shipping, uh, that you can use to ship your produce. Uh, a lot of those are connected, uh, which is great because you will be able to tell if for some reason uh, it went down uh, and know that, hey, there's something wrong here with the produce, uh, with the actual container on the shipping container, um, this, this container, uh, where you can actually say, hey, we need to do something here now, or even when you get to the dock, understand that, okay, there might be something wrong with the actual assets now in the shipping container because we saw you know, the temperature go down um, and we need to check on this right away. And so this is really, this use case was to really showcase that uh, having connected refrigerated containers can be really impactful because it can tell you the condition of the actual food or produce or any, any you know, there's a lot of assets that needs temperature control or pressure control um, and how they did that. And also lots of times with these shipping containers and uh, when you're crossing the ocean, it's not connected um, or maybe there's, only a satellite connection to the cloud. Uh, so this also shows a great offline story as well of being able to continuing to collect that data. So when you do arrive to a place that does have connection, that when they get there and have that connection, uh, you can go ahead and send that data up so you can quickly get insights and make the appropriate actions. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the Azure portal. Uh, I know we've been going deep into these uh, PowerPoint slides, so let's just take a break and go and learn how to get set up. So if you haven't seen yet, we have uh, Microsoft Learn. Uh, Microsoft Learn is a great place to do online sandbox environment training. Uh, it's, it's about a year old for Microsoft and I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, so what we're gonna do is if you wanna follow along or I'm gonna go through it uh, and you'll have the link at the end or now, it's totally up to you. Um, but I wanted to showcase what we're going to be doing right now. So we're gonna create an Azure dashboard research group. 
We're going to create an IoT hub using the Azure portal. Then we're going to go through what's actually in when you're in uh, created an IoT hub. What are some of the uh, features of it? What are some of the views? Um, and we'll, we'll deep dive into that. And then uh, we're going to create a device provisioning service and link it to our IoT hub. So let's get away from the PowerPoint slides for, for a bit. So I'm going to take this link. And where it goes to is actually Microsoft Learn. Uh, and this is a learning path. Um, part of learning paths have different modules. These are all standalone units where they're all they're individual hands on tutorials. And there, you can actually uh, do these modules by themselves. You can see that this learning path has a set of modules you can go through um, depending on what you want to learn. This one is all about introduction to Azure IoT. Uh, so what I'm talking about right now, enabling digital transformation, you can learn from this module um, and what our strategy solutions are. Uh, but what we're going to focus here today is learn how to manage IoT devices as an IT admin. So we're going to go ahead, click on that. And I just want to show this to you, but I'm going to go into the Azure portal, so we won't go step by step on this tutorial because uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, how to get everything started. So this tutorial is really the basics of getting started with IoT Hub. Uh, and so you're going to get the introduction to IoT. You're going to get uh, use a Raspberry Pi simulator. If you haven't worked with Raspberry Pis or Niffy uh, dev boards are super popular for makers and developers. Uh, and so it's it's a, a, a simulator for that. Um, and then we'll set up our hub, register, run the device, uh, and we'll see how that all works. All right, so you can start or you can wait until the end of the presentation. So what I'm going to do, I have two accounts here. Um, I have a dummy account and so this is the Azure portal. Uh, you can go to portal.azure.com. Uh, you will need to log into the portal uh, through your email uh, or just uh, any actually any type of email you should be able to get into the portal. Uh, you can see in when you're on the home page, you can create a research resource. Uh, you can see that some of my Azure services are already up there because I already use the device provisioning service. I was already using an IoT hub, but normally you see subscription, your resource group, if you have a virtual machine, your storage account. Um, it helps you navigate what your tools are. And so there's many ways to actually create a research resource. Uh, so you can create it from actually on your sidebar, um, or you can create it from your home page, uh, or you can even just create it through your search. So I'm going to just show when you create a research resource. When you are in the marketplace, we do have an area just for IoT. Um, and what you're going to see is your IoT hub, your device provisioning service, IoT central, uh, and we'll, I'll actually go through building an IoT solution um, with uh, IoT central shortly. Uh, but you'll see related services to IoT. So if I click on that, it'll give me more information and it will say how to create it. Uh, so we could go ahead, work through and create a new one. So I'm going to create a new research group. Research group. So uh, let's see, I think I'm just going to call it IoT workshop part one and i've just created a new research group um, this research group is all about um, having your collection of different services and products 
um, you select your region. Um, I always recommend people to check the actual uh, products that you're going to be using and their availability in different regions. For example, that I find this really, really useful um, pro uh, search products available by region. Uh, and you can you can do a Bing or Google search uh, that says uh, Azure IoT availability by region, or it's on Microsoft Azure, um, our website as well. So if I look at Azure IoT Hub, I like to see what I have available um, in the different regions and where you're located. Um, and the good thing is it shows across all of regions. I just have it selected for, for United States and Canada. Um, and then you can also see like, for example, uh, device provisioning service. If I'm in Canada right now, it's not available. Uh, it will be available, the device provisioning service, even though IoT Hub is available. So if I wanted to use device provisioning service, no, I don't need to be in Canada East, but it, it's good. It's just good to know where your resources are going to be. So I'm just going to choose East. Let's name it um, your IoT Hub. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say IoT Hub Workshop Part One. Okay, perfect. I'm going to. wanted to highlight pricing and tiers. This is really important, especially when you're starting out to understand what these different tiers mean. Uh, so we do have a free tier uh, and I always recommend folks get started on the free tier and there, instead of the, the basic tier, um, uh, mostly because if, you, if you're playing around, uh, here's another site uh, that kind of goes through the IoT Hub pricing, this linked right up in pricing and you can search for IoT, but I wanted to bring this up because you can see that basic does not cover uh, device streams or cloud to device messaging. It's all about that device to cloud telemetry. Um, and so there's definitely cost savings here, but if you wanna do bi-directional communication, definitely choose the free or standard tiers. Um, and if you're just getting started, the free tier is great because you can actually, uh, it depends on your number of messaging, but if you're just piling and you're just testing our services, uh, you can see that the free tier, how many number of uh, messages you're being sent to, that you're allowed a day, um, and then it goes up by standards. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the free tier. Um, you are limited to, to one per uh, ascription. Uh, so I'm gonna actually have a couple, <laughs> actually have a couple of these IoT hubs set. So I'm just gonna hit the uh, standard. Uh, I'm gonna review, see everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and create. And what you do, what you're gonna see in your Azure portal is uh, deployment is happening. Uh, so what this is doing is creating your IoT hub, good to go. Um, so I'm gonna go over here and you're gonna see my screen's gonna be a little bit different, but it's because I actually have the information hidden. So if if you're someone who does a lot of uh, training or needs to showcase, uh, uh, not wanna showcase sensitive information, uh, even though this is a dummy account, I always like to just kind of tell people, hey, there's a thing called an Azure mask where you can actually hide your username and all of that information. Uh, but it's this is the same um, IoT Hub that uh, we were creating. Um, actually, I grabbed another one, but I can actually see all of my IoT Hubs for particular ascriptions. So you can see that's the one we just created. I'm gonna jump in there. And let's Let's go ahead and uh, it's not an active state because it's still being being built. So while we're waiting for that deployment, let me go ahead and jump on this other one that's already been deployed. And normally deployment doesn't take very long. Uh, sometimes you see it two minutes, sometimes five, depending on where you're at, but it's fairly quick. 
So overview, the information you're gonna get in overview, you're gonna see the tier that you're on. So uh, for this IoT Hub, I'm on free. Um, you're gonna see your host name uh, and your actual subscription ID, your current location, if it's active, information that you're going to want to see. Um, I do have a device that's active on this IoT Hub. That's why uh, you, are, you see a couple spikes. Uh, and so you see activity log. This is really just gonna go through uh, exactly what it means, activity log. Uh, so if you created a new uh, research resource, uh, what you've done with your IoT Hub, got all my keys. So all of the things that you were doing with your activity, um, it's logged. Access control. Uh, so if I wanted to add a user to this IoT Hub. I, this is where I would do that. I can add them as owner or set different permissions for them. Uh, so tags, uh, you can go ahead and set tags. Uh, this is more for billing. Uh, so I'm not going to deep dive into that area. Um, you're also able to uh, diagnose and solve problems. This is this also uh, talks about kind of kind of gives you a little bit on how to troubleshoot some top issues. Uh, so it's a nice, it's just kind of a nice way if you're having issues being like, oh, where do I go? All right, so events, this is all about our event grid integration. Uh, so event grid integration, um, uh, we'll talk more about in the, the fourth webinar. Um, and it's a way for you to set events, uh, being able to, for example, if I, have uh, my Raspberry Pi device connected to a temperature sensor and I created a logic app that whenever the temperature gets too hot, I wanted to send an email, you can do that. So you can see that um, there's different options with event grid. Um, and due to the time for this webinar, we won't dig too deep into that. Um, share access. This uh, really, again, goes into what your permissions are for this particular IoT hub, pricing and scale, um, which you can see that information and in overview, but it gives you your uh, pricing um, and if you need to switch as well. All right, so I'm going to get to more of the ones you're going to be uh, really looking into a lot. Uh, that one is your IoT devices. This is where you're going to register a new device. Before you can even connect a device, you need to actually register a device to begin with. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new device. Uh, this I'm going to say uh, verbal, uh, verbal device. Um, and you don't have to enter primary key or secondary. It should, automatically generate those keys for you. If you have a X509 search, you can do that here. Uh, but uh, for the sake of time, we're just going to use SAS token. Uh, so you can see I registered a device. Um, when you register that device and you click on it, this is where you're going to find your primary keys, your secondary keys, your connection string. Um, so let's go back to uh, that online tutorial with the Raspberry Pi um, when they talk about register and actually running your device. There is a link to setting up your actual uh, Raspberry Pi in the code. So let's go ahead and dig into that. So this code um, what it's showcasing is that uh, it needs a connection string, and this is all about how it's going to connect to your IoT Hub. So you have your IoT Hub device connection string. Um, this is going to connect to your IoT Hub securely. Um, the next piece of code is uh, the LED pin. Um, if you've worked with Raspberry Pi device, it's really just the pin that's connecting to your LED, um, and then the rest of the code is all about there's a temperature sensor here. Um, when uh, a message is sent, it's sending the reading of the temperature. And every time you send temperature up, what happens is 
the response will be that uh, it will evoke a method, which will then go ahead and uh, light up your LED. So what we'll need to do is actually take that connection string. So we'll go back to the portal. This is your, uh, you want to use your primary connection string. You can go ahead and take your connection string and then you're going to add it to here and you're going to make sure you just uh, get rid of the, the brackets and add it right there. Um, I actually have already added it um, and I scroll down so you can't see what my connection string is, but I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see that, okay, we've sent the message to IoT Hub. Um, you can see what the message is. It's temperature and your humidity. Um, and then every time it gets a message um, sent, the LED lights up. So we should be able, going back to your overview, you can see now that, oh, okay, um, and soon that uh, device to cloud messages are coming in. So this is a good way to just see that things are being sent up. But this is a very, very simple, simple getting started overview. Um, uh, in the next, next uh, training event, we're going to really deep dive into the code and talk about how to do device management, what is a device twin, um, how you invoke methods, all of that. Uh, but this one is a great way to just quickly get started and be like, okay, I've now sent data up to the cloud. Um, and also want to show how you can link your IoT hub to device provisioning service. So we're going to go ahead, go back here, and we can create a device provisioning service. You can see I already have one, but I'm going to go ahead and add, name it, uh, so device uh, EPS workshop, um, IoT research group, resource group, our main resource, location, and I'm going to have that create. And you can see, it's fairly simple on uh, that deploying and creating creating a DPS. So if I wanted to go there, go back to home, and you can also search as well your DPS. I'm actually going to go ahead and go to this one that's already created so we're not waiting on the deployment but you can link your iot hubs here so i'm going to go ahead and add i got my dummy inscription and then my iot hub and then you're always going to see it as owner and then i'm going to go ahead and hit save and what this does is links to your IoT hub for device provisioning service, because you do need to link an IoT hub for device provisioning service. Uh, the provisioning service is a part of the, the IoT hub. Uh, we'll learn more of why you're doing that. Uh, but the goal here is uh, just to showcase how easy it is to, to link your IoT hub to device provisioning service. Uh, device provisioning service is perfect, especially if you're going to doing, uh, if you need to connect a lot of devices um, and register and configure them pretty quickly. All right, I'm going to hit refresh and it shows up. So we are good there. Easy peasy. So let's go, go ahead, move on and go back to the presentation. And one one thing I would like to say, though, if you are wanting to do this module um, or this full full uh, learning path uh, that we link to, uh, you could go to the learning path. And what's great about these is that since it's a sandbox environment, you didn't even need an Azure description to get started. I used a, uh, a Azure description um, uh, that I had. Uh, however, you don't need 
to do that uh, if you're getting started because part of this is let's say you go here you're going to see a note that says it doesn't requ uh, require an Azure description but you can actually activate a sandbox and a sandbox environment lasts um, for about two hours, uh, depending on which module you do. And what's great about that is that it gives you an Azure description. So if you you know, don't want to sign up right now, it's OK, because you can still test this um, out and learn without it. All right. So let's continue. So we kind of we, we kind of touched on edge devices and why they're important. Um, not every IoT solution uses the edge device. Um, that's why I didn't highlight it as a core uh, subsystem. However, uh, there are a lot of IoT solutions that use edge devices that have, you know, IoT devices would say that only have like Bluetooth and can't connect to the cloud. So they need some sort of gateway device to be able to connect to the cloud that has that capability. Um, or, you know, there's there's many reasons why to bring a gateway device in or uh, uh, to, to act like a gateway device to the cloud gateway. So your edge device. So we're going to go through this um, and so edge Let's go back to what we talked about before with the IoT application pattern. You have your things going to insights and actions, um, and then the action being driven back to things. So that's the normal, normal way of doing things. But when we start bringing intelligence in, we can actually drive those insights and actions on the edge side. Uh, and this is great for many reasons, especially in manufacturing where, you know, there's a lot of limitations with connection. Um, so maybe the Wi-Fi isn't good or there's a lot of interference. Um, and also what happens with real time uh, responses? So, for example, if um, uh, if you're a gas station and you have security cameras up and the security cameras have, let's say, uh, AI uh, models that have been deployed on, a, on the security camera that does uh, object detection. And the object detection, one of the things it looks for is if someone is uh, pumping their gas and then uh, smoking a cigarette, it can alert, um, uh, process that data on the edge quickly. Uh, because it's closer to the device side and then send up the information that it needs to send up um, uh, to the cloud for the actions to happen. So for in this case, uh, it'll send up, hey, there's, uh, you know, uh, a cigarette has been detected, uh, a safety concern has been detected, do something now. It goes up to the cloud and the cloud, uh, uh, depending on what you have up there, uh, you can send say, hey, we're going to send an alert to uh, the gas station attendant uh, to be able to stop that person. So, um, or it can all be done on the edge side. You didn't have to send that information to the cloud. Um, so you can quickly tell the attendant um, or who's ever managing the gas station, hey, something's happening right uh, right now, do something, and you don't have to have that sent to the cloud, uh, then the benefit there is reporting up for like assurance companies or, uh, you know, if if there was a uh, police uh, investigation that's going on or anything like that, then you have that information in the cloud and stored of, of what happened. All right, so we do have offer IoT Edge. IoT Edge, again, um, you can offload your AI your, um, uh, and do all your actions and insights uh, on the Edge side. You can operate offline, real time. Um, and the great thing about IoT Edge, this offering, is that um, you, it's open source, uh, which is really, really beneficial. Um, and it can run on Windows and Linux, uh, so it's it works on many different types of devices. So you don't have to just work with Windows. You don't have to just work with Linux. You can work with what your business is using today, uh, which is definitely really important if you're trying to get uh, started quickly. Um, also, there's a lot of tooling support for IoT Edge. Uh, and also, uh, you don't have 
we have uh, development using languages that most likely you already have. Uh, so example, Java, uh, C Sharp, Node.js, C, and Python. Um, and so if you're working with IoT Edge, you can work with any of those languages uh, for your modules. Perfect, another use case. Uh, this one was all about uh, that offline uh, capability of IoT Edge and also real time. Uh, so Newcrest, they have a lot of concerns when it comes to um, uh, mining. And with mining, uh, they needed to be able to uh, uh, have sensors that was able to understand what is the the dust, uh, what is the you know temperature. Uh, also, there was a lot of earth tremors. Uh, they needed to be able to detect that. Uh, so it was a really challenging environment, and and especially for miners them who are in that environment, and also the equipment that's in that type of environment as well. So what they did was actually have uh, edge devices which were running AI workloads that were able to process what was going on on the edge side and then be able to make decisions there um, in a quick environment. So they were able to uh, be able to know when their machines need to be fixed. They were able to lower their downtime and they were also able to create a safe working environment for their employees too, who are working in the mines. So this one's also, I really like this story. Anytime it's work, uh, play safety, I'm a big fan of. Okay, so I did mention IoT Edge uh, works with Linux and Windows. Uh, and since I mentioned Windows, I definitely want to cover it real quick. Uh, so Windows for IoT, uh, we have a couple offerings. Uh, one is, um, uh, before I get into the offerings, the reason why to go for Windows IoT, especially on the Intelligent Edge side, uh, we have Windows ML uh, support for Azure IoT Edge. Also, uh, uh, they've made sure that the Windows IoT operating system uh, is able to run ML really well on the Edge, um, and then it's secure. Uh, we have a full team backing it up, and it's fast. It's quickly, uh, it's very quick for you to get started with IoT devices with Windows. So what is actually the offerings for Windows when it comes to IoT? So Windows 10 IoT Core is actually an um, uh, operating system. It's for small uh, footprint devices. Uh, so like Raspberry Pi, um, you can run Windows 10 IoT Core on it. Uh, and then Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, uh, these are for more fixed function smart devices um, and it's locked down, but it's still a full addition for Windows 10. So you're, you're getting that full uh, feeling of Windows 10 because it is, um, but it's a little bit more catered for IoT uh, uh, devices. And then we have, uh, especially if you're doing really, really demanding edge compute workloads, you have a lot of AI or uh, machine learning running on the edge, uh, Windows Server IoT 2019, and then we have SQL Server IoT 2019 as well. Um, and the biggest thing for this and why uh, there's a lot of folks who go for Windows for IoT uh, is because of the 10 years of support of security and, uh, and um, device management um, and those extra features. Um, so this one's a unique use case. Um, and so this one kind of goes back to the gas station example, but it's it's a little bit different because uh, this one, Dover, what they did was actually create kind of a, a, a smart uh, gas station experience uh, that's personalized for who's ever pumping the gas. So imagine you're pumping, pumping the gas and uh, the screen um, is starting to advertise relevant products for you um, and it, it kind of creates more of a personal feel at the gas station um, it's, it's a different way of thinking of things of you know being able to uh, have something a little bit more personalized for you uh, so how it's working is that it understands you know your past purchases in the gas station so let's say you really like that super gulp 
Um, and, you know, maybe uh, maybe you're in a hurry, maybe the ad, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the actual uh, machine itself that's pumping the gas, uh, uh, the screen pops up with a super gulp uh, based on your past purchases, or maybe it says, hey, there's a discount or, you know, a loyalty program or something like that. It's a little bit more personalized for you. So it's, it's an interesting take uh, and it's kind of a fun one. We also have Azure RTOS. Um, for those who may be not aware, uh, Azure RTOS. Uh, so Microsoft, we inquired Express Logic um, a while back. Uh, so Express Logic, uh, they're one of the leading. Uh, let me. Uh, they're one of the uh, leading uh, uh, folks in the industry who is um, uh, who have uh, a RTOS offering. Um, so they have over 6.2 billion deployments already. Uh, and so we did recently acquire them. Uh, and so you're going to see more and more um, information about Azure RTOS, what that means. But really, uh, RTOS uh, stands for Real Time Operating System. Um, it's all about providing a reliable, real time uh, performance for constrained devices. Uh, and so, uh, with that acquiring of, of Express Logic, uh, we're hoping that also we have Azure IoT support, and you'll start to see that. Um, and so, it makes it easier to use solution. Uh, for you to go from pilot to production um, and access all of the power of Azure IoT of what we've what we've talked about in the past. Um, and it also so it connects directly to Azure IoT Hub and it can also connect indirectly to Azure IoT via uh, IoT Edge as well. Um, and you can see we have a couple uh, silicone partners for that. All right, so I'm going to go kind of quickly uh, for the rest of the presentation. So going back to that overall IoT architecture, uh, you see I just circled a big chunk of stream processing and storage and business integration and UI experience and dashboard. Uh, and so you're probably wondering why I circled all of that. Um, and that's because of Azure Time Series Insights. Uh, so Time Series Insights it's definitely uh, a great way to get all of that uh, and be able to go from pilot to production quickly. So what it does is ingest and process your data without this extra coding, um, which is really important if you're if you're trying to get started quickly. Uh, and I could tell you, if you want to get started with Time Series Insights, uh, you saw that we just created an IoT hub and we started sending simulated data to IoT hub. The next step is really creating an Azure Time Series Insights and linking that to your IoT Hub. It's as simple as that. Um, and so it's so quick to get started. You get a nice dashboard for Time Series Insights. Um, and then also you can store your warm and cold data analytics for quick interactions with stream and historical data. Um, and then nice visualization for that data. Uh, and so I just wanted to show some screenshots of that. Uh, so you're able to actually see uh, quickly uh, the data in different time spans. Uh, you know, and even if it's shorter or longer time spans, you can create that. And also with Time Series Insights, let's we'll say your company is already using Power BI um, as uh, the rest of your business. It actually, actually you can connect um, uh, uh, have it time series insights has extensibility through power bi uh, connector to be able to enable you uh, to uh, actually see all this in power bi as well uh, so uh, it's just it's just a great way to integrate with your business and also just start seeing the data in some sort of visual form so this is a Another customer example where they were using time series insights um, in the industrial IoT space. Um, so in manufacturing, they were able to actually see um, the you know information coming from the equipment. 
Uh, and so this goes back to why it's powerful in manufacturing, because a lot of this data was entered in manually. A lot of manufacturers, you know, it takes a lot of time to have many teams sit there and, you know, create these IoT solutions and create a dashboard uh, and have teams that are developing all of that when they can be working with time series insights or uh, partners like this. All right, so I'm gonna jump into Azure Maps. Uh, I always feel like there's uh, not enough people who know about Azure Maps when I talk to folks, but it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's it's a series of APIs um, for enterprise uh, enterprise users. Uh, so it comes. Uh, you have APIs for maps. You have SDKs. You have routing capability which i'll i'll show you in a moment search capabilities um you can see traffic time zones geolocation um and then you can host your private map data on azure maps as well um, we just released uh weather services a power bi integration and then government cloud support too uh, so if you work uh, and you have to use the Azure government cloud, uh, this is a good thing to know about. Um, and the reason why I like to highlight uh, Azure Maps is because location data is a big part in a lot of IoT solutions. Think of asset tracking. You need to understand where you're, where you are, uh, um, and so Azure Maps can really help with that. Um, and so again. A little bit more information, Azure Maps. Um, uh, you can use Azure Maps with open source and familiar map controls. So if you already have mapping, um, already using open source things, you can use Azure Maps with those open source projects, uh, which is really nice. All right. Uh, this example I really like because it talks about geofencing. Um, and so imagine that you have a construction zone and part of that construction zone, you have blocked out areas um, or you have different areas where um, if a truck goes into that area, you want to be alerted on. So this is this is a really great way of using geofencing to map out the areas uh, that you want alerts to be sent out if a truck goes into a danger zone or again go back to the workplace safety if a construction worker works into walks into a construction zone which they're not supposed to you could be alerted on so you can use Azure Maps geofencing capabilities for that. Um, I love this page. Uh, you probably hear the excitement off of my voice, but uh, this page is really amazing because it has a lot of demos. So if you wanted to get started, let me pull this up. There's a full uh, website that is all open source code um, and there's 211 code examples. So you can go wild on here. Um, but what's great about this is you can run the sample, you can get the source code, but it showcases the power of Azure Maps um, and then also how to incorporate it with your own, uh, with some other open source projects, mapping projects. Uh, so one of my favorite that I just like to highlight um, is a truck versus uh, car versus truck route. Um, so I already have that pulled up. So example of this, let's say we're traveling from Seattle, we're going to Redmond and I am going, my vehicle is going to have flammable liquids. Uh, so I'm going to calculate the directions. And so with Azure Maps ra uh, routing, um, one thing with the routing is that you can set if it's a truck or uh, a car or plane or anything like that to help find the right route. For example, this truck, um, which you can see in green, the green line is the route they're gonna take. Uh, due to the fact that they have flammable liquids, it has to take another route uh, because it has information that it can't go this route. Uh, it's the same, you know, you might see signs when you're driving and the over a bridge and it says no uh, flammable liquids or anything like that. Uh, you can't go over certain bridges, but this actually shows what you're able to do. So if you have connected um, or ask, uh, connected logistics that you need to think of, this is a, a great example. All 
All right, so we talked about the lack of skilled workers for IoT solutions. There's there's really a couple of ways to handle and 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 uh, solve this issue. One is a lot of great training material out there. Also, making sure the services you build is is uh, it's uh, easier to use. Um, but there's also another thing that we're looking into, uh, which goes to Azure IoT Central. Um, so going back to everything we just talked about with. Uh, IoT Hub, TPS, all of those different products and services. That was if you were going to build your own IoT solution, um, the Passway. Um, and so that is if you really want that kind of uh, full control of what your application is going to be uh, and, uh, you know, have the team to do that. Um, and what IoT Central is, it handles most of the device management, um, your a lot of your overhead, a lot of those services um, for you because it's a fully managed IoT app platform. So you can build with IoT Central and you can customize it too. And I'll show you that in a moment. I'll go kind of quickly, but, uh, uh, but it's really there to simplify the setup reduce management burden, um, your operational costs, because uh, you know some customers, partners find it easier to build with IoT Central because it's based on how many devices you have. Uh, so it's really easy to understand your pricing um, and it's super scalable, it's industry focused, and it's already enterprise grade. Uh, so you can feel really confident um, using IoT Central uh, that it's secure for you. And then also a great thing with IoT Central, it helps with your business integration and um, uh, can uh, uh, connect to other things like Power BI as well. Um, real quick, so the difference between going pass and this manage app platform. So there's always a question of uh, which one do I choose? So some three key things to think of is one management. Do you want to spend your time and resources um, uh, building an IoT application through all of the past services? Um, or do you want to take advantage of a managed service? And keep in mind that this is not yes or no on like what is what is better uh, for uh, everyone. We're not saying everyone should go to IoT Central or everyone should go the the platform services route. Um, it really depends on your business. So if you want that full control of all of your services, past services is the way to go. Uh, if you want to get started quickly and um, you are okay with Microsoft really handling that app platform, you know, the app platform managed side where we take care of the scale, the security, and your management of your application devices for you. Uh, that's the reason go to IoT Central. Um, and then what elements of your solution do you want to customize? If you want full customization and full control, go the past way. If you want to customize mostly just branding and your dashboard, uh, then um, and then what your devices are, what your telemetry are, uh, then, you know, it makes a lot more sense to go to IoT Central. And then pricing. Um, pricing, as I mentioned before, with IoT Central, it's a lot easier to understand your pricing because it's based on uh, devices and it's, it's some messaging as well, but it's it's super straightforward. Unlike if you're building with past services, you know what the pricing is for each services, but due to the fact that would say your IoT solution, maybe you decide to use Azure Stream Analytics and go to a Power BI. There's different pricing on those different products and services that you have to calculate. Um, so your capabilities for IoT Central, white labeling, so you can change the colors, you can add your logo. Uh, we also have uh, templates that are for different industries. I'll show you in a moment. We have IoT Edge support, multi-tenancy support, tons of API support, plug and play support um, to be able to connect to devices quickly. Um, and so I am actually going to jump through and 
back to Chrome and show you an example. This is IoT Central, and you can see that there's a lot of uh, templates that you can choose from, but you can create your own template too, um, or your own app, but you can get started off a template. So I actually have one that's up right now uh, that's Connected Logistics. Uh, the Connected Logistics, uh, this one's all about um, having a bunch of trucks and uh, boats that are all over the place and you need to be able to track them. And so you can see with IoT Central, I was able to fully customize this dashboard um, I'm able to view my devices. Um, I'm actually able to set rules. So I have a couple rules already set up. One is gateway uh, theft alert. So let's say someone uh, stole one of my assets. I actually have this set up where there's a certain threshold uh, and condition set up that the action would be that um, to send an email that uh, something was stolen. In this case, it was a gateway device. Um, and then you're actually add, able to add more analytics to this, and then you're able to export your data too, which this is a way for you to be able to connect to Power BI or maybe you want to export your data for long-term uh, data storage. It's, it's, it's fully up to you. And not only are you seeing your data, you can also do things like update firmware. So it's it's device to cloud, but cloud a device as well. So in the back end of this managed service, it's IoT Hub, DPS, Time Series Insights, Azure Maps, all of that for you uh, in this, this uh, nice, easy to view and uh, connect your devices to. So that's IoT Central. All right, so um, one thing I would like to show is security. We go back and we've said a couple times now security is really important. So for security, we do have Azure Security Center for IoT. Azure Security Center has been around for a, a while now. So what's great about this is that you're actually able to uh, see across your full IoT solution, not just IoT Hub, but across your full IoT solution. So think of um, VMs, uh, your databases, all of that. Um, you're able to see if there's vulnerabilities. You're able to see if you know there was a, a person who tried logging into your device. Um, and then you're also able to get recommendations to improve your IoT uh, solution as well and how to make it more secure. Um, and then you're able to create custom alerts as well, which is super powerful because you're the one who knows your IoT solution the best. Um, and so for you able to create your own alert, for example, if you know that your device should only be sending up, um, uh, you know, a, a certain uh, amount of data and instead it's sending, you know, tons of data for some reason, uh, you can actually set up a alert to say, hey, something's happening here. Someone's messed with this device or, you know, like this, this is abnormal. Let's let's uh, be noted on this. Uh, so definitely take a look at Azure Security Center for IoT. And then I want to jump into developer resources. Uh, so learn how to get started with IoT. Mention the, uh, the actual learning paths uh, and all of the modules that we have on MS Learn. Uh, that is a great way to get, <coughs> excuse me, online sandbox environment tutorials. And we have a lot of tutorials that you can go through. Um, we also have a developer guide. So if you just want to see, OK, where do I even get started? Like I just I'm a little overwhelmed here. Seems to be a lot of products. Um, we cut we went over it um, in this in this event, but there is a really good developer guide that goes through. OK, if you're looking for stream processing, here's the products you can look into. And this is what stream processing actually means. Um, and so that's it's a, a really great starting point if you're just getting started. Uh, and so we also have the Azure IoT Reference Architecture Guide. Uh, this is a nice kind of uh, view of our subsystems. I went through it today, but it gives more of a deep dive on it. It's actually um, 
it, it's like a 70 page uh, uh, PDF that you can actually uh, download or view and it really goes through what are some things you need to think about like high availability what are some common um, um, architecture things that you need to consider when uh, mapping out what your needs are so it's a pretty it's a really good uh, guide for you on what products you should choose because uh, maybe Time Series Insights uh, is right for your business, or maybe you want to go through Azure Stream Analytics and and you know uh, for the uh, connect that to Power BI for visualizations. And then of course we have our Azure IoT Docs. The Docs have getting started, tutorials, uh, how-to guides, reference papers. So for example, if you wanted to learn more about security, you can deep dive into uh, all of our security white papers to really get you uh, up ramped. And also, if you're uh, already a security expert, you will find those white papers super valuable and information there. And then IoT show, I'm doing a plug here. Um, so we have a new video every Monday. Um, I'm also a host for the deep dives, which are training videos every Wednesday. So if I, if you are interested in what our latest announcements are, um, they're about five, 15 minutes every Monday to watch, hey, this is what's new in the IoT space. And then the deep dives are 20 minutes to 45 minutes on a particular feature. Uh, so that's the, the vanity link is aka.ms slash IoT show. We also have the IoT tech community. This is a brand new community where you can actually get updates. You can share your projects with folks. Um, us in uh, engineering, we're, we're in this community. So if you have questions, uh, some technical questions or business questions or anything like that, definitely ask because uh, we're all about wanting to hear uh, any issues you're having, but also if you have new feature ideas or anything like that, this is a great community for that. Um, and we also have blog uh, posts of new tutorials. All right, uh, so this is the last slide. Uh, so all about getting started. So there's that uh, learning path link for you to get started. Uh, the managed uh, devices as an IT admin is what we showcased in this event uh, today. And then uh, please sign up for the end-to-end -end IoT solutions. Um, the rest of them are going to be really deep diving into the code um, and really all of the features within those particular products and services. So device to device communication, we're really gonna deep dive into IoT Hub, um, device provisioning at scale, we're gonna deep dive into device provisioning service and answer all of your questions there. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more Q&A, um, uh, messaging and process Processing and uh, analytics and business integration. We will cover time series insights, event grid integration. So remember when we were in the Azure portal, that event session, uh, section, uh, we will cover that and how to create a alert. And then Azure Stream Analytics will cover both Azure Stream Analytics on the cloud and then on the edge as well, because they do have edge capabilities. Um, and then the last one, IoT Edge, it's all about IoT Edge. We'll talk about what are some best practices if you have offline um, uh, that or solutions that have offline needs. Uh, we'll talk about how you actually create a module, on um, how you actually store containers in the cloud and deploy it on a device. So we'll work through each step on creating an IoT Edge solution. All right, well, thank you so much for joining this uh, uh, training event, and I hope you found it valuable. If you have any questions, reach out uh, on the tech community, and we're excited to, to answer your questions. Thank you.